Hey gorgeous, it's Carlene. Thank you for tuning back into my channel. In today's video, I will be doing a comparison between two fragrances that I've heard smell very much alike. And those fragrances are Valaya by Paul Fender Marley and Mystique Bouquet by Afnan. If you're interested to hear what I think about these two fragrances, then please keep watching. Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. If you're here, then I know you're interested in finding out how similar Afnan's Mystique Bouquet is to Valaya, just as much as I was, so we're about to get into it. But for those of you who have just stumbled across my channel, on this channel I make videos on lifestyle, luxury, I do review videos to include lots of fragrance talk, and I also sprinkle in a little bit of my personal life in my monthly vlogs. So if any of those things sound interesting to you, then I would love to have you here. So please go ahead and hit that subscribe button to join the family, and also be sure to turn on that notification bell so you know exactly where my videos drop. All right, let's get into it. All right, friends, let's talk a little bit about Valaya. So when Valaya first came out, it was not a fragrance that was on my radar. I wasn't looking to purchase a freshie. The notes didn't appeal to me, and I was actually at Neiman Marcus looking to purchase another fragrance. And one of the sales associates who was kind of there at the display, she came up to me with a tester card, and I smelled it. I said, oh, this is nice. And I put the tester card in my handbag, and I just went about my business. I ended up purchasing the fragrance I was there to purchase and didn't give it another thought. Throughout the following week, every time I opened up that handbag, the scent of this fragrance met me. And I was shocked that after several days, the scent was still so potent on that tester card, like a tester card. Every time I opened my handbag, I smelled this beautiful scent. Needless to say, after having that experience, I realized I needed this fragrance in my collection. So that's how I ended up picking up Valaya. I also have Cassili from the brand, and those are the only two Paul Fender Marley fragrances I currently own. This fragrance is the perfect fragrance for very hot and humid climates. It's also perfect for the person that loves a very feminine fragrance, a very soft fragrance. So it's feminine, it's very soft, it's a freshy, but it's so complex. I think the complexity is what drew me to this fragrance. It is so beautifully complex. It's very soft, it's fresh, it's juicy, it's fruity, it's feminine, yet it has these witty touches, these aldehydes that just give it a complexity to it. To my nose, this opens up very juicy and fruity, and then all the other notes sort of develop throughout. Then after you get into the middle notes, I feel like this scent pretty much stays the same throughout the entire wear, and this is a beast mode freshie. I had no idea the two things could exist. A beast mode freshie sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds like a contradiction in the world of perfumery. So I think that's the appeal with this fragrance. This fragrance will stick beside you on the hottest of days, on the most humid of days. This fragrance has your back. It will keep you smelling fresh. It will stay bright. It will stay the same throughout the entire wear and it's beast mode. So people are definitely going to catch whiffs of your fragrance. So let's talk notes. So Valaya. Valaya opens up with aldehydes, a bergamot, peach, and a mandarin orange at the top. And I feel like it gives you this blast of just fresh, fruity, juicy goodness. And it's all very ethereal. It's all very light. It's all very bright. It's all very uplifting. And I think the aldehydes in the opening is just genius for giving you that blast of freshness that kind of feels like a drink. A drink for a person who has this immense amount of thirst on a super hot day, it sort of quenches that thirst. That's how this opens up. Extremely satisfying, juicy, bright, slightly zesty, very fruity opening. I love the way this opens up. And as this wears, you don't lose that fruity, juicy goodness. It kind of stays throughout the entire wear. While the bergamot does dial back a little bit, the aldehydes kind of stick around the juice Juicy peach kind of sticks around and it just stays bright and juicy and sweet. Then you start getting some of those 
florals that are in here. So the orange blossom, the lily of the valley. Lily of the valley is a very water-like note. It's like a dewy white floral. And then you have Patalia in here. This also has a trademarked note called Nymphiel. The Nymphiel, I feel like, is what makes this fragrance extremely unique. And then the Mahonia is a fruity note, but it also has like a vegetal facet. So at the mid of this fragrance, some florals are introduced, but everything in the mid of this fragrance is still very bright, very water-like, very juicy, and slightly green as well. So when I looked up Nymphiel, Nymphiel was just listed as a synthetic, weird type of note. And I think that's what makes this fragrance so unique. This is the first fragrance that I own with the note Nymphiel. If you all have any other fragrances with that note, drop it down in the comments. Or if you've heard of any other fragrances that carry the note Nymphiel, drop it down in the comments because I'm really curious. Um, this is the first fragrance that I'm aware of has that note. So I really feel like that's the secret sauce with Valaya. That is the secret ingredient that makes this extremely unique. So then at the base of this you have vanilla, you have akagala wood, you have musk, you have ambroxan and it just makes for a musky extremely woody base that has a slight sweetness to it. So on the dry down the musk really comes out on this fragrance and you keep that fruity juicy freshness but now the woods come in and the musk comes in really grounding this fragrance and making it super duper long lasting. I forgot to mention that this also has a vetiver at the mid which is an earthy note. So yes, those are my thoughts on Valaya. It's like a beautiful concoction of citruses, water-based notes, water-based and really light florals, woods, musk, and a slight earthiness. And I think that's what makes this so unique, so intriguing. That is what makes this super long lasting. That nymphiel is like the secret ingredient, I feel like. And I think this is a very unique scent. One that if you have not tried, I highly suggest getting your nose on the next time you are at Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom or even Dillard's has this as well. Now let's talk about Afnan's Mystique Bouquet. So this is Afnan's Mystique Bouquet. It comes in this really beautiful packaging. I love the packaging that this comes in. And overall, I am just so impressed with the packaging that Arabian fragrances tend to come in. I think they are so well done. The presentation is always top tier and I'm always taken aback. And this is no exception. So beautiful. So let's open this up. So here we are. That's what it looks like inside. And yes, the packaging is always so beautiful, so luxurious. Afnan seems to do packaging extremely well. And so far to my knowledge, only to be rivaled by Latafa. Well, you always get luxurious packaging and that always just kind of adds to the experience of the fragrance. Now I've already opened this. I just wanted to show you all what the packaging looks like. I'm going to spray this fragrance on a sheet of paper. We can see the atomizer is super nice on that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with Valaya. I also sprayed both fragrances on my forearms earlier, so I'll let you know how they have dried down. It's been about a couple of hours, so they definitely have come to the dry down phase. This bottle, y'all, is absolutely gorgeous. I love the ombre effect where you have the green and it gradually changes to blue on the way to the base of this bottle. I love the gold cap on this. I think it is absolutely luxurious. The bottle feels substantial and this would be so beautiful on a perfume tray or a vanity so they have done such a great job with this packaging now the scent let's talk about the notes mystique bouquet has notes of white peach mandarin orange bergamot lychee and then it has middle notes of orange blossom vetiver mahonia and peony and base notes of ambroxan, musk, vanilla, and oak moss when i first sprayed this it definitely opened up very similar to valaya it was fruity, juicy, zesty, bright, and it was very, very reminiscent to Valaya. It's very similar. It's a very similar scent on the opening, for sure. Very, very similar. Now, what this is missing is the Nymphiel note. I think that's one of the key differences between this dupe and the original. 
it's missing that something and it's it's something that i can't describe because the note is a note that is a synthetic note it's a trademark synthetic note and i feel like it is the key ingredient to valaya that makes it so super unique and it's missing here now this is also at the base missing akagala wood and again i feel like the akagala wood is a very distinct note that makes valaya valaya and it's missing here this fragrance is a lot less woody and i think it's because the akagala wood is missing i would say this fragrance is about 85 to 90 percent similar to valaya it's an extremely affordable option to give you that valaya dna without breaking the bank when i smell valaya it just smells so unique and to me i was really surprised that there was a dupe for it and that's aside from the notes so for them to have come up with something that is so similar to Valaya is amazing this is an extremely great dupe it's not a hundred percent similar it's about 85 to 90 percent similar in my opinion but if you want the Valaya DNA or you want to just experience it to see if you want the real thing check this out this is missing the nymphial and it's missing the akagala wood and in my opinion as this dries down it's a lot less woody valaya is so much more woody than this fragrance it's like very fruity the peach note really shines and it gets slightly creamy on the dry down it's on my right arm right now so let's take a sniff yes this dries down very creamy and soft and slightly musky i would say valaya is a lot more woody and a lot more musky on the dry down whereas this one it gets soft creamy and it stays fruity on the dry down also performance wise valaya is beast mode it's a beast mode fragrance high projection and high sillage the first four to five hours of wear whereas this one performs more moderately this is actually an eau de parfum and this performs like your typical eau de parfum this will last on your clothes the entire day however valaya is absolutely eternal on your clothes. You will still detect Valaya after washing your clothing. So Valaya is beast mode. It has more of a woody facet, more of a musky presence than this one. This one dries down soft and slightly creamy, whereas Valaya dries down musky and woody, and then you still get that brightness even in the dry down with Valaya versus Mystique Bouquet. It, all the notes sort of soften out and get really soft fruity and creamy on the dry down. Those are my thoughts on the difference between these two fragrances. And I really hope this video was helpful to you, especially if you've been interested in Valaya, but you're not sure about it. I know I was hearing a lot about Mystique Bouquet and now that I've gotten into Arabian fragrances, I definitely wanted to test it out and see how it compared. So I was really happy to bring you this video. If it was helpful to you, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out because that really helps my channel. And also if you enjoy fragrance content I do quite a bit of it on this channel so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also turn on that notification bell so you never miss another video before you click off of the video a lot of times the greatest opponent we will ever face in life is ourselves and what I mean by that is a lot of our greatest battles are battles of the mind so how we perceive ourselves, how we perceive other people, the things that we may be dealing with on an emotional level. If you can work on your mind, if you can feed good things into your mind, into your soul, then that really is the key to transforming your life. Feeding my mind with good things, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are encouraging, motivating. Reading the Bible, reminding myself of the things that God says about me. Watching other really motivational people, listening to motivational podcasts and really just feeding my mind. But those things have really been a catalyst to me being the best version of myself possible. And that's the goal, right? For us to strive to be the best versions of ourselves possible. That has been my personal journey. I feel the best when I am feeding myself good things. The music I listen to, the videos I watch, the movies I watch, the people I hang around, the things that I read. My eye gates and my ear gates are highly protected because I need to protect my mind. Think about your mindset, like what is your current mindset? And what are the things that you're currently feeding yourself? Hopefully that is an encouragement to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one very soon. Mm -hmm.